Um, very briefly, we're talking today about uh, the new way you can run the server. This is a little bit not ready for prime time, but it does solve a lot of problems that we've had in the Docker setup. Um, and I want to make sure everyone's familiar with that as we start going forward and trying to improve the docs for the simplest possible setup. I firmly believe that the setup we have now is still important to have Docker containers, to be encouraging people to use Docker containers, not just because Docker is cool, um, but because it does actually solve some problems we have and that we aren't going to be solving right away separate in this new way. So very briefly, uh, the way we used to run Docker is that we would, um, or why we used to run Docker is that we would start the server running our own um, gRPC service, which contains the entire engine. gRPC is the mechanism by which external uh, clients can connect and talk to it. And external clients can even be other workers that we haven't uh, really developed our documentation around that. Unfortunately, browsers can't connect to gRPC as it is. You have to use some kind of a proxy. The main proxy that's available for that is Envoy. Um, and even once we've got Envoy, the, these two pieces in motion aren't enough because the gRPC product that the, the gRPC team ships doesn't provide a way to serve static HTML, JavaScript, which is how our console actually runs. So we have to add this other netty process here as well. Uh, I'm sorry, not netty, this other um, Nginx process. And all this is is our own quick build to say, please serve static HTML and JavaScript. And even this, unfortunately, isn't enough unless you have SSL. If you are running on localhost, probably you're not going through the effort to set up SSL. If we add just one more process at this point, you know, why, why even worry about it at this point, um, we can remove the need for SSL for local development. And we can say, just add this one extra proxy here, um, which will transform gRPC into WebSockets, and then your browser can connect properly. Um, okay, can you, does, go, can ahead, you go over those one more time? I don't think I got all of the subtleties. <laughs> sure. So this is the, the worker itself from Deep Haven Enterprise, the idea of the worker itself, uh, gRPC, uh, the gRPC process, which uh, runs the engine. Uh, which runs any of the code you actually execute, whether it's Python or Groovy. Um, it, it writes to your cache directory, it reads from your data directory. This is that process. Web is the static content, the HTML, the JavaScript, the CSS, that powers the, um, the Web IDE experience. If you're just connecting from a Java client or a Python client, none of these other pieces are necessary. But this one's necessary for the web, the static content. Um, Envoy is necessary to turn gRPC into gRPC web, which is a separate spec, which is compatible with browsers, uh, but it still requires SSL to stream data the way we want to send it. In order to handle not having SSL, we have this one more proxy, which turns gRPC web into a special web socket, one web socket per stream. So instead of opening just one big socket, we open one socket per table you're streaming, for example. There are other advantages to using Docker. For example, in the uh, enterprise setup, we had uh, we had to build a different version of some of our internals for different builds of Python. We had this, uh, I think it was called with pi equals true, you had to set when you were going to run a Gradle build and you wanted to have Python working. And we defaulted that to false because it was kind of a headache for everyone else to have to work with. Um, we got rid of that by saying, never mind, all Python's gonna happen in Docker which limits our operating system requirements to just Linux and lets us dictate which version of Python would be used. We specified 3.7.10. Um, it also, at least for a little while, let us specify this is only going to be run on, um, on x86, uh, just traditional uh, computer processors that we've been, everyone's been using for a while on their desktops and laptops. Phones have run ARM. ARM has become more popular. It's now what powers uh, new Mac devices uh, and servers are more and more getting into running ARM. So it's something we would have to run, we'd have to get ready for anyway. Um, but that one extra variant hasn't caused us a lot of headache. So we'll we'll circle back to that later, but we, we are going to have to introduce a different way of running Python in the future. Okay. Um, so that's the old setup. That's, that's why we would run prepare, compose, um, and then once that build is done, you would run your Docker Compose up to say, please launch all four processes. If you change anything, you have to um, rebuild the Docker images with Prepare Compose. And if you 
um, if you want to get some other data in there, sometimes you have to tweak our Docker Compose setup. Not, not the greatest experience for making small changes and saying this, this setup is perfect except for one little thing. So I'm just going to kill this because we're not actually interested in getting this whole work done. Um, the new way of running as a developer is that you can specify jetty, uh, j server dash jetty colon run. And this does the work of both building all the code that's necessary and starting it up. So we're running using Python uh, with that one command. Quick question. It just disappeared, I'm afraid. Sorry, I have a quick question. Just to clarify, when you say developer, are you talking about somebody, a developer using Deep Haven or de a developer um, developing on like a new feature or something in Deep Haven? Right now, can we see my screen again? Is it yes. Okay. Uh, right now I'm referring to if you have our Git repository checked out and you are running Gradle. So you are building either our own setup or a fork of our setup. Gotcha. Um, hypothetically, you could be writing your own Java project using Maven or Gradle or something like that. And you could be depending on uh, the artifacts we distribute. We don't yet distribute the server, but we anticipate doing this. Um, and then adding on to the pieces we have and saying, I, I want to run all the things you have, but I also want these other services for some reason. Uh, or I want some other web content, some web plugins that are built in by default, et cetera. Okay, cool. So, because uh, I, I don't think it worked earlier, uh, Gradle server run, or uh, Jetty, sorry, Gradle server Jetty run. And that is the command that says build and run everything. And there's only one process that runs. We don't even bother with the other three anymore. And that is enough to run localhost 10,000. Actually tells us here, this is this is its way of saying localhost. 10,000 is the port to connect to. And then the entire web environment will run. Um, OK, so now the downside from how simple this is. Actually, before we get to that, there's one more piece to show. If you are a developer in our repo, install dist is the command to say, please build me a zip distribution. So instead of downloading a Docker image, we would have server jetty build this one downloadable file. And as a user, you could download that. So I'm going to pretend that I just downloaded that instead of making it myself. Unzip server jetty zip. And then if I just downloaded this, I could say I want to run server jetty bin start. OK. I don't know why we don't have that set. I apologize for that. Oh, because I'm dumb and I tried to CD into it. All right. So that's the server running. Now it's actually running. Um, just by running one thing, downloading a zip, unzipping it, and running one command from inside of it. Any chance you could pull up the browser just as evidence that it's running? Uh, I would have to, yeah, I can do that. So are, are we publishing that artifact yet? We, I don't believe we are right now. Just a moment, I'm sharing the other screen. I'm sharing the other window. All right, and then the, the single process here, is that doing everything that the four were doing before, or is it only a subset of that functionality? Um, it's not redirecting for some reason. I have to figure that out. I thought this was working. So here's localhost 10,000 IDE. Um, it is not building the entire Python environment. So that's the big gotcha. You have to now set up your own Python environment or use Groovy. The instructions are not terrible to do this, but it is extra work right now until we manage to simplify that. Um, and just for the sake of example, uh, these real tables. Yeah, this is from a bug I was working on. So these are Python commands running locally. It isn't a big deal to get Python running, but it does take some work. And I broke something. Layout hints, right, it got renamed. Okay, do we, do we have details on how to do that? We have a, a preliminary document. And we are going to work on improving that. 
Okay, so there's the, there's the system actually working. I'll show you where that document is. Uh, we also have an issue and the issue is linked from the document. Okay, I'm gonna switch back over to the code screen. Unless anyone has any questions from inside of this environment. But per, per Chip's question, if you, other than the Python thing, right? You itemized <clears throat> inside of Docker, we're building Python, but also inside of the Dockerized version, we're running these uh, four classes of services. Um, I think what wasn't obvious to me in your answer to Chip's question is, is this process you just showed us now running all of those? I think it's. Yes, good point. I'll, I'll be more clear. Um, so the server process we already had working more or less, we've just moved it to a different kind of server called Jetty. Jetty is already an all-purpose web server, so making it serve static web content was easy. We just had to tell it, hey, that directory over there, go serve it. Um, to handle the gRPC web and WebSocket stuff, we've actually only handled the WebSocket for the moment. Um, and the WebSocket took a little bit of work, but it's something we think the general community will be interested in. So it was work that we think will we'll have other benefits for us. But this is also running that WebSocket proxy inside of the same process. Yeah. Uh, Ryan, just... for example, is very pleased about this because it means we don't copy all the data that's streaming out of the server into the proxy, copy it again to send it over to Envoy, copy it again to send it over to the user. Um, many copies of lots and lots of data makes him unhappy. Okay, so, so since we're doing a socket per table, or uh, what are the negative consequences of that? Um, we or are in the number of sockets we can open. We have done some work to try to limit how many sockets will happen. It used to be that every autocomplete command used to run its own socket, and we would have some problems with um, when you would type too fast, the whole system would freeze, tables wouldn't open, things like that. Um, but we've done some work to reduce the number of uh, sockets that get open for that. Nobody, as far as I'm aware, has noticed the limit now that we fix those other problems. And we fixed them in several places. Autocomplete was just the most visible one. OK. Um, and then, yes. mm -hmm. You know, and then with the, the Python install, um, you know, that has, I guess, created another set of problems where we need uh, Python wheels for um, each different architecture. Um, you know, so are, are we creating those artifacts and do they actually work? We are not creating them as part of the build today. We will need to if we expect this to be the main way for users to interact with the system. Uh, it's my personal opinion that this is a better way for people comfortable with Python to interact with their system. Um, so I made a temp directory and I put inside of there, um, I'm in the wrong directory. I put inside of there a Python env, and then I installed the wheels. Uh, I built the wheels locally. As far as we can tell, all the platforms we've tested so far are able to build cleanly with one small modification that Genfang has for uh, Max. But we, we have not actually tested all possible platforms and all possible Python versions. OK, it, so I, 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 I guess the reason I'm asking this is because last time I tried to do this, I had to get artifacts from Genfang uh, because I couldn't get them to build. And then once I got the artifacts, they didn't want to install. <laughs> yep, we are we are going to have to put a little bit of effort into this and decide if that effort is worth it. I think there's going to be at least one research step here to say, is this worth it? And if it's not, OK, we've got to give up. But running Deephaven locally and expecting a Python data scientist who has a working Python environment to ignore that environment, to have to set up Docker, to have to set up Docker volumes, um, it's not a very compelling story. Is, is what I'm getting from every time that someone has to come and say, okay, so how do I get this in there? How do I install this in there? What do you mean I have to rebuild this every time that you know, I get an update? It, it, it does get a little bit silly. Um, if we use virtual environments and say, here is where my wheels are gonna get installed. If we say, uh, to tell the server as it starts, here's the virtual environment I expect to use. The Python environment you're running here, just by running temp, DH bin Python um, is the same Python that you get in the browser. It's exactly the same wheels on your native machine. You don't have data directory problems anymore because it's the same. It's the whole operating system that you've got access to from your own local um, instance of the server. So I, I definitely acknowledge that there's going to be some headache with getting that working. I just don't know how much headache. 
hopefully we can make this uh, GitHub's problem, the GitHub CI. And then once we're building these, deploying them to um, um, uh, PyPy, I think the, the artifact repo mm -hmm. or server is called, um, it shouldn't be our problem at that point. It should just be, it's distributed. Anybody just runs pip install dpaven2 or dpaven to get whichever build it is. If we are able to move to the same version of JPY that uh, the JPY consortium or whatever it's called has and that they that they um, build and make available, that isn't our problem anymore. To my knowledge, that is the main issue we have um, with dealing with separate platforms and also with new versions of Python. For example, their builds correctly work on Python uh, 3.10 and possibly 3.11 while ours does not. Yeah, we, we there. there's some work that has to happen to bring our fixes over into that that, that hasn't been prioritized. Right, we, we think it's a good idea, we just haven't done the work. And this maybe weighs a little further into the direction of this is a good idea. If we can get it done, it makes more of this less our problem. <clears throat> right, so just to be clear, while we've, what we've kind of what you've kind of outlined in the last three or four minutes is what our team will need to do it will be our headache to the extent that we think this is important to support <clears throat> and it comes in the two flavors of supporting the a broad intersection of operating system and python versions a one and two probably you know or certainly addressing the fork version of jpy right now um hopefully uh you know, via the project plan that Chip just alluded to that's already been articulated. Yeah, it, 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 it's, but I think that that's an either or. If you solve one, you don't have to solve the other. Yeah, and it, it may go beyond just the operating system. We're JPI, you know, we need to make sure it works properly on ARM. And we have, and it does. Pete and okay. Ryan are running it on ARM. Yeah. Yes, I am doing that now. Um, and then before we move on, uh, can I just r rewind you back five minutes, uh, uh, Colin, and just have you articulate in a couple of sentences um, the product that we think might be available and might be interesting to the world in regards to the intersection of Jetty um, and gRPC that you know you worked on as is pretty fundamental to this delivery and we think is has standalone value outside of deep haven yeah so i found a project that had more or less been abandoned by one of the grpc core team members um and it was tens of versions out of date um but it appeared to have the basic pieces we needed uh, better than any example i've found so far and I just mostly took the work of rebasing it up to the latest version. I had to fix a lot of tests. I had to add some more tests. Um, there were a couple other changes that had to be made along that along the way there. Um, they had lost interest. This individual had lost interest and was no longer able to spend the time uh, necessary to keep it going. Um, having done that, the, the developer who originally wrote the work that I brought back to life has picked up the work again and is doing a little more finishing touches before they merge it to make it officially part of gRPC Java itself. So this will be something that will be easy for any other developer in the world who says, I would like to run a gRPC service and serve anything else to the web. This is not just a standalone service that's going to be deployed as part of um, some massive microservices thing where services talk to other services, but no real world clients directly talk to those services. Um, that, for, for reference, that's sort of how gRPC expects to behave. It expects to be stateless. It expects to have lots of different services that you can bounce between. Um, and it expects that no uh, real browser user ever connects directly to the services, but they always go through at least one step of proxy before they talk to any real service. So it really is designed for you know, massive cloud deployment kinds of stuff. This makes it a little more real world for, look, I just have a single service I'd like to have available. It should be able to scale, but right now I just need one thing instead of needing to set up all the scaffolding to, to run a single thing and have a user connect to it. So we think for that class of product uh, like ours, where we don't really fit into gRPC's exact purpose, we're sending very big messages. 
We are very stateful. Um, we don't make a lot of sense for gRPC um, as it was originally designed, but gRPC works very well for us. Uh, this is something that's going to be helpful for other, other projects. The other piece I added that's um, not something that we necessarily anticipate that the gRPC project will merge is this WebSocket proxy. And this is just a tiny bit of code that says, take the regular gRPC message and translate it into something that we can send over a WebSocket. Um, this is two or three Java classes that replace, yeah, these two classes replace this gRPC proxy process entirely. There's a little bit of configuration that has to be done to say, hey, the services I want you to serve are over there, get to it, um, and, then, and then the work gets done. Um, this is something that we will probably distribute ourselves to say, if you're in a situation where you'd like gRPC to stream lots of data, so you don't want to use HTTP 1, um, but you don't want to run SSL for your local development, this can be a way to get around that. Thanks. That was perfect, Colin. Thank you. It's a little niche. It's it's going to be specific to the people who want it, but the people who want it want it badly and don't want to mess around with um, setting up lots of pieces like we did because this this feels pretty onerous and and a lot of people want to avoid that. Yeah. No. I think it's 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 very exciting and we think it adds value. Period. Obviously, we're a big beneficiary, but well beyond that. Cheers. The one more thing I wanted to show is that if you run this from Gradle, we have a Groovy command to say, I would just like this to run using Groovy instead of Python. <coughs> um, and we're running the various Groovy scripts and the server's running. The way to run this from the command line, if you just run the start command itself, um, I, I don't remember it off the top of my head, but there is a command you can specify. I can show you where it is. Oh, I need to show you where the wheel instructions are too before we go any further here. Let's see, server, jetty, uh, read me. So we have this optional step here to say, if you need to set up a Python virtual environment and have your wheels installed on Mac OS, there's one extra step at this time. This is the ticket where we're tracking some of these issues generally about how to make this easier. Um, making a virtual environment is pretty straightforward. You have to activate it. And then once you've activated it, you have to you know, add a few more things to that virtual environment, like um, upgrade pip, install a wheel, specify your deep haven version. And then there's the commands here to actually build the wheels. Build the wheel for uh, deep haven JPY itself, build the wheel for the deep haven API. And then uh, once those wheels are both installed, you have a working environment that you can run this command from, which is the one I showed below, or you can grab uh, one of these. I'm sorry, this is not the command I showed below. This is the same as as uh, this is the one that produces the zips. Install dist just gives you the unpacked directory. Um, this Java ops is the way to specify. I would like Groovy to run here. If you don't specify this, if you just run the start command, like I was showing before down here. Um, it will assume you want Python because we want to assume in general that Python is, is what we expect. And then it also shows the Groovy command. So this is the readme in server jetty. What's the impact on somebody who just wants to run a Python client? Uh, should be none, none at all. However they want to run a server, they can run it. If they want to do it this way or if they want to do it with Docker, your Python client runs its own wheels, its own um, everything that it wants. And all it uses is gRPC to communicate with the server. Whether it goes through Envoy or not, they shouldn't really notice a difference. It's possible that um, it's possible that when things, uh, when you start moving a lot of data back and forth, you might notice a difference and that Jetty will be more performant because it's copying data through Envoy less. 
It is generally believed that the gRPC Java project uses Netty instead of Jetty because it's more performant. Um, but our hunch, which is as yet untested, is that doing an extra copy of all the data you send or two extra copies is going to outweigh any performance improvements that Netty gives us. So the, the general answer is effectively no impact, but the devil's in the details. There, there may actually be some very small differences. So our plan in the near future is as we start to resolve these other pieces, uh, we will distribute not only the zip itself to download this, but also the intermediate pieces that are used to make a server. And then we're going to want to put together some examples of how do you build your own server? What happens if you need an extra service or an extra HTML file or JavaScript file to serve? Um, some of the work being done with the matlib plot Python stuff to say, hey, I want to run an extra command on the Python console and have it actually show up in some way in the browser. How do we how do we make that work? D3 is also being discussed to say, I've got data that needs to be rendered in a particular way. I need to write new Python to run it on the server and write new JavaScript to render it in the UI. Okay, do we do we have an actual timeline on creating the artifacts or the, uh, sorry, the wheels? No, um, I think there's gonna need to be a research step there to make sure that this is even feasible. Um, and if it makes sense for us to build our own versus actually try to land some patches upstream in JPY. Um, if it's easier to land the patches, I think that's far and away the best answer because as long as that keeps building in all versions and as long as we keep testing in newer versions or just pin to an older version that builds for us, uh, we should stay happy. Yeah, we have a good relationship with those guys. I mean, we just have to put the work in to get our fixes uh, in the main repo. Yeah, if, it, if it's anywhere near the same level of effort of just building our own versus asking them to merge our patches, that seems like the easy one to me. Okay, well, them is us. Um, so, well, yeah, sir. yeah. The, I think th build. this can this can be part of the dis this is like the uh, part two of the discussion with the team later this afternoon. It's you know it's probably only the last ten percent of that meeting, but I think we can talk about it then. Okay. This was great, Colin. Thank you. And uh, All right. feel free for, to ping me if you got any more questions. Like I, um, like I, like I said, for uh, non-prep, uh, you rocked it. So much appreciated. Thank you.